Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Eleven. Eleven is brought to you by DM Jockey. It is for two to four players, ages 11 and up, and games generally run 45 to 60 minutes. Now, if it's not already obvious to you, Eleven is a tabletop soccer simulator. Each player will take the role of a coach. As a coach, you'll control a team of 11 players, utilizing a deck of 20 strategy cards. Each player chip is unique and displays player's name, kit number, preferred position, and up to five special abilities. Strategy cards differ by color, duration, and effect, and can be used to boost a team's game or to inhibit the opponent's strategy. Players, or coaches, can play with one of the featured set teams or draft players to compose their best overall team. Strategy card decks can also be customized. The game features a collection of more than 100 unique cards. Eleven simulates real match dynamics in a simple and intuitive fashion without sacrificing tactics and strategy. The game mechanisms are a mix of German and American elements in which the casual factor is balanced by positioning strategies and resource management. So, Join me as we take a closer look at Eleven. So first off, I must admit, I am not a big sports fan. I mean, I do have some familiarity with soccer. I played in grade school and junior high, but some of the terminology is lost to me. So I was really interested to see how well I could engage with this game. It's beautifully produced for one, and they've really streamlined the rules and how it works. I've been working with them for a while now, actually, on this game. A couple years we've been going back and forth, I've tried a, different, a couple different versions, and they really made this accessible. You have two different versions really to play, because all the players have icons that reference special abilities. They have a really handy reference card for that as well. If you want to play with these abilities, they add a lot, giving you bonuses when you roll and try to achieve different moves, different shots, things like that. So these are definitely worth playing with, but for your first couple games, you don't have to play with these special abilities and you can just do the basics. So we'll take a look at that and we'll just give you a kind of a broad overview. Obviously the basics are here. You're moving your players, you're positioning them, you're trying to dribble and move past other players in order to score a goal and then reset up and go again. And the game in trigger here is that you have 20 strategy cards and we'll take a look at strategy cards in a minute but these strategy cards are really your game timer so once the last card is drawn then you will play one more or you'll finish out that next round and the game will come to an end and you'll total score so it's really that easy so the board is broken down into quadrants you've got boxes and quadrants and lines of quadrants they're all color coded you've got red yellow green so each of these chips or each of these players will have in the middle exactly where they can be positioned. You have some options with these players as well, but it will guide you in how to place them. And they give you some great starting information about where to put teams out and how to begin a game for your first game and so forth. So it really is subjective how you want to put your players out, but you do have some options. And I like the fact that setup is super quick and easy just based on color coding and different rows and positions that you put players into. So gameplay here is incredibly straightforward. You, as the coach, using your chosen soccer team, will have the option of playing up to three actions and up to three strategy cards. However, at the end of your turn, you must position padlocks, which we'll take a look at, and you must draw a strategy card, because again, drawing that last strategy card is the game in trigger. First, let's take a look at the available actions. Obviously, you're gonna be moving a lot in this game. You have single player movement and you have group movement, which is really, really powerful. The group movement takes place with any of the players that are in the same line, quadrant line, I should say. Then you can move all those players. Now, movement has a couple different options here based on what type of player you are. You might have special abilities if you're playing with those that give you even more movement options. But the basics here are if you're not the ball carrier, you can move up to two spaces. If you are the ball carrier, you move up to one. So you can move in any direction, you know, orthogonal, diagonal, whatever works for what you need to do passing is something you're going to be doing a fair amount of and it's really straightforward but there's a bit of a push your luck element here you are going to be rolling dice to see if you're successful so you're passing to a teammate you have to calculate how many quadrants away they are if it's three you have to roll a three or better and if your teammate is engaged with your opponent you know however many chips are there you have to roll against that as well so maybe there's one or two 
on your teammate and three quadrants away. So that means you'd have to roll a five or better. So you can see things start to get harder the further away they get and you know how many different opponents are on your teammate. And if you fail your roll, well then your opponent is gonna take possession of the ball. So like I said, a push your luck element for sure. And then you've got dribbling, which you're trying to change position with the player, dribble around them, so to say. And here again, this one's interesting though, is that you have a dice roll off. Whichever coach has the highest value is gonna win that. And potentially if you win and you have the ball, you're gonna to move to that position where the other player was, moving them to where you were before. So you can also lose the ball and have it stolen this way if you fail the roll in that roll off as well. And of course you have tackle. Now tackle is also all about trying to steal the ball from your opponent. Again, a roll off back and forth between the two coaches. And again, if you have special abilities in play, some of those are gonna really help you out here. So dribbling and tackling seem very similar, but there are some slight differences in how you engage with your opponent. But if you're the loser in either of these roll offs, you're gonna to have to flip over your player and they're gonna be out of commission for that next round, but just the round after, and then you'll flip them back and move on. And then we have the shot action. I'm sure you're wondering how to take your shot on goal, trying to score points. Now, you have to be in possession of the ball, obviously, and in the shot box down here at the end of the field. Now, there's minuses and pluses, depending on where you are, bonuses when you take that shot. However, your opponent's gonna be rolling to see if they can defend. They will get pluses based on defenders that are standing in front of you. So. It is a roll off again when you try to gain those points and score a goal. Now, what might be my favorite action, it's actually two, but counts as one. You have the cross and header. So if you're in the cross box and you possess the ball and you have a teammate that's in the header box, which is basically you're trying to score, you're passing and trying to score all in one action. So you pass, you gotta still calculate the different quadrants. And if there's any opponents standing next to your teammate, you calculate all that and roll to see if you successfully pass the ball. And if you do, then your teammate gets to try to header in to the goal. And you, same thing as shot. You're going to be calculating your bonus based on where you are in the header box and you're rolling against your opponent. And if your opponent has a player in front of you, they get bonuses as well. And you hope that you've made the shot. Now, as a coach, the only time that you can't pick your first action is during the kickoff. You will have to pass the ball to one of your players to start things off. And that does count as your first action and then you move from there. It is very thematic to the game, absolutely. Also in your turn, you can use up to three of your strategy cards. And it's important to not just hold those back too long because you might have to make some tough choices if you do. Every turn, you're drawing a new card at the end of it. So you might have to discard because you can ever only hold five cards at any one time. So with these cards, you have several options and they're all color coded. There's some icons to know right away though. The lightning bolt means it's an instant action that happens right now. Or you might have an infinity symbol. That means that card will be in play and continue to aid you through the course of the game. So some interesting choices there as well as to knowing which ones to play based on what you're doing for your actions because they're all color coded. You have white cards for athleticism, just giving you general abilities and so forth. You have black cards, which I love black cards because these are directly related to the coaches, giving you things like an extra action on your turn. And then you have your pass and cross, that cross maneuver I showed you. These are yellow cards, giving you special bonuses and definitely some nice strategy moments with those cards as you pass across the field. And then you have red cards for tackling, might give you bonuses when you roll, and you have blue cards for dribbling, trying to move around your opponents and so forth. Also, perhaps maybe trying to steal uh, the ball from your opponents, all kinds of different strategies to be in play here. And then finally, we have the green and purple cards, which is green for taking the shot on goal or purple for trying to save the shot on goal. So again, all these cards are gonna really play into what you're doing through the course. Everything here, super thematic to the game of soccer and everything works really well. And I really, again, I can't stress enough how accessible this was. It really played out well. Now, these cards also have symbols on them related to the special abilities of your players. So you wanna position players in the right place where you can utilize those strategy cards. I like that aspect and just playing with the special abilities in general adds a lot of depth to the game. 
So at the end of your turn, there are two things you must do, no options. You first have to place these padlocks. Now there's a black and a white one. The white one is ineffective against players that have the gorilla icon on the player chip. But really these padlocks can be positioned to block out certain squares, perhaps protecting your ball player temporarily, super temporarily, and allowing a bit of a safety zone there. And then finally, the last thing you're doing on your turn is to draw a strategy card. No options. Again, this is the timer of the game. It will be moving through your deck of cards, absolutely. And so you'll continue this way round after round until one player has finished out their strategy cards and whoever has the most goals will be the ultimate soccer player. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, I encourage you to go look deeper at their rule book and watch their how to play video because you can see more of the intricacies of how the different uh, actions work and how passing and shooting works. I really think they did a good job here making it accessible and easy to engage with. And I like the dice roll offs and definitely the strategy cards play into a lot of things you're doing. But I love the moment when you make this impossible pass across the field and you succeed and the game flow continues from there. Just a ton of fun. It feels like that moment of triumph. And there's a lot of that in, the, in this game. And I love dice and games, so I like the dice roll offs quite a bit. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.